Hello, in this video we have more fun with Lug. We're gonna be talking about how to draw gravitational field lines and look at some other examples of the gravitational field outside of the surface of the Earth. Okay, last time we talked about a gravitational field, which is a way to represent the idea that the force due to gravity can act between two objects even when they're a great distance away. So the idea being that something like the Earth, well anything with mass, creates a gravitational field around it that extends throughout all of space, and anything in the gravitational field of, say, the Earth will feel a gravitational pull towards the Earth. A way we can represent this is by drawing lines, we call them field lines, to show this gravitational field. And here are uh, essentially the rules for the gravitational field. First, the lines point towards the object creating the field in the case of a gravitational field line. So what they're showing us is the way that the force would act. They show us the way that the force due to gravity would act on a mass. If I put a mass out here, it would get pulled this way towards the center of the Earth. If I put a mass over here, it would get pulled this way towards the center of the Earth. If I put something over here, it gets pulled like that. Um, so they all point radially inwards. And if I draw these lines, one thing we notice is when I look at this uh, big picture view where I can see the whole globe of the Earth, the lines will spread out as we get further away. What that represents is that the field is weaker as we get further away. And we know that from our equation because there's a one over R squared in the equation. So the density of the field lines, in other words, how close together they are, represents how strong the field is. So stronger field closer to the surface, weaker field further away. What you can kind of imagine is here's a close-up picture of what it looks like from the surface where um, you know we're so close to the surface that it... Uh, the, the ground is essentially flat to us on a small, small scale. And so we have a uniform gravitational field here at the surface of the Earth. We don't see any kind of bending or spreading out at this scale. The lines are all basically parallel when we're on a very small section like this. So we have these parallel field lines. The, the acceleration due to gravity, the gravitational field, is directly down towards the center of the Earth. And so this is the field we experience and see in our everyday life. Um, the parallel lines show us it's all pointing down and that the field is not any weaker or stronger, you know, like at the top of a tree than it is at the bottom, not realistically. You have to get pretty far out before you start noticing that the field lines are spreading out because the planet is curved. All right, so that's how we draw these field lines, and it's a good way to visualize what's going on with the field. So we can think about those spreading out field lines when we think about some uh, more exciting examples of gravitational field strength. For example, the International Space Station. Here are some fun animations of astronauts goofing around in the space station. There they go. Look how goofy these, these guys are. Um, notice they're floating. They're floating around. You, we see this kind of thing. Um, and what we call this is weightlessness. We call this weightlessness. If you look at that, it sure looks like there's no gravity, right? A lot of times we call this zero gravity, zero G. So they must be real far away, right? Must be real far away from the, uh, from the Earth to be experiencing zero gravity. Or are they? Let's figure it out. Here are the numbers. Here's how far away the space station is. It's 350 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. That's how far above our heads it orbits. Uh, if you keep track, you can, it's, 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 uh, you can find on the internet where this thing is at any given point. Sometimes you can see it passing overhead. And you can see it, it's uh, 350 kilometers up. It goes real fast. So can we figure out how strong the gravitational field strength is at the space station where these astronauts are floating around weightlessly? You go ahead and give this a shot. Use the equation for gravitational field strength. Um, you can use some of the values from uh, previous problems we've done. You'll need the mass of the Earth, perhaps um, some other information about the Earth. You decide what you need to figure this out. But give it a shot, pause the video, see if you can figure out the strength of the field. Okay, great job. Uh, here's, here's what this looks like. The trick here is that I need to know how far away we are from the center of the Earth. So if you use 350 or 350,000, it's not going to work because we need to know how far away is the space station from the center of the Earth. So I need to incorporate the radius of the Earth. And essentially... R in my equation that I'm going to use, the distance between the object and the center of the, the center of the Earth and the space station, is the radius of the Earth plus the height of the space station. I'm calling it the height above the Earth. Well, the Earth has a radius of 6,000 kilometers. 
The space station is only 350 kilometers above that. It's nothing compared to the radius of the Earth. This here is a scale picture of what the orbit of the space station looks like. The blue circle is the Earth. And to scale, the red circle is an outline of the orbit of the space station. It is barely skimming the surface of the planet. Yes, it's outer space officially, but it is not nearly, you know, way out there, not even close to how far away something like the moon is. That's really how close it is. It's very, very close to the surface. It's practically on the surface. So the distance between the space station and the center of the Earth is 6,700 kilometers, whereas we're 6,300 kilometers. Well, that's not a very big difference. If we use our equation, we find that the gravitational field strength is 8.8 .8 meters per second squared, or 8.8 .8 newtons per kilogram. It's almost the same. It's 9.8 here, it's 8.8 .8 there. A little less, 11% less, or something like that. But certainly not zero. The, the weight of these astronauts we could find, their weight up there, it's not zero, it's not zero G at all. You would multiply their mass by 8.8 .8 instead of 9.8. .8. They're a couple pounds lighter, but not a lot. So what's the deal then? We got look at look at all this stuff. They're floating around, they're flying around. It looks like there's no gravity at all. So we have to ask ourselves what is happening with this weightlessness thing. Okay, because these astronauts um if they weigh 180 pounds on Earth, they might weigh 150, 160 pounds in the space station. There's very 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 little difference in terms of their actual weight. They're certainly not weightless. So what is happening here? If you can think about that, why are they floating like this? Can you think of any other situation where there's this kind of floating sensation even though you don't literally weigh nothing? So the idea is how orbit works. We'll do a lot later in the course with orbit, but for now to just introduce this idea of weightlessness, we can think about a few things. Essentially, these astronauts are falling. The space station is falling. The space station is plummeting towards the surface of the Earth all the time. This fast, that's an acceleration. That acceleration is towards the center of the Earth. It is falling, 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 down, down, down towards the Earth all the time. The thing is, it's just moving really fast side to side. That's all orbit is. It's falling when he moves side to side really fast. Here's a fun uh, thought experiment. It's called Newton's Cannon. It was a thought experiment that Newton came up with. And he imagined this. Imagine you put a cannon on top of a cliff or, or a mountain or maybe a volcano here. Why not? And we launch a cannon and we launch a cannonball out of the cannon. Well, we know, you know, at normal cannon speeds, it'll go some distance and fall down to the earth because of gravity. It'll follow some kind of parabola trajectory and fall down and hit the surface of the earth. But what if you launch it a little faster? Well, it'll go further. And this one might go splash into the ocean down here. The idea behind Newton's count is what if you launch this thing so fast that as it fell, the surface of the Earth curved away from it. And because of the curvature of the Earth, this, a cannonball following this trajectory is falling, 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 falling all the time. But it's moving so fast side to side that it never hits the surface. That's orbit. And that's what the space station is doing. It's falling all the time and also moving side to side really fast, so fast that it never hits the ground. That's all anything that's orbiting is doing. Um, all right, we can also uh, get into some of this later, but as you go faster and faster, the, the shape of your orbit changes. Heck, you might even be able to go so fast that you never come back. Here's another fun little animation of this idea. Whoop! See if you can go throw a rock so fast as it goes into orbit. There is a number. We'll get to it. You can calculate how fast you got to throw something. It's real fast, but if you throw it fast enough, indeed, as it falls, as it falls, it's falling that whole time. You see it? It's falling, it's falling, it's falling. It's just that the Earth's surface is curving away from it. All right, so this is what's happening with the space station. It is in free fall. So here's the whole idea with weightlessness. It's very similar to if you've ever been on any of these theme park rides like the Tower of Terror where you're in free fall. You have the same acceleration as the thing that you're falling with. And so there's no normal force between you and the thing. All right, this is really what weightlessness is. Weightlessness is a sensation that happens when there's no normal force acting on you. Um, in the space station, it's because the astronauts and the spacecraft are falling down towards the Earth with the same acceleration. 
And so because they have the same acceleration, there's no relative like normal force between them. They're both just falling together. And much like when you're riding the Tower of Terror, as that thing falls out from under you, you kind of float. You float as you're in free fall because the ground is falling with you. And so relative to the ground and the, and the you know, space station that you're in, you're both falling together. You just kind of float around. All right, so it's all about the normal force. Uh, your weight, and in fact, what you normally think of as your weight is really probably your normal force. You can't feel your own weight because that's a force. Um, th that's not a contact force. What you can feel is the normal force. You feel the ground pushing up on you. Um, you might notice this in an elevator. Uh, if you're standing in, a, in an elevator and the elevator accelerates up, you go up to a higher floor for a moment as it speeds up, you feel heavier for a moment. In fact, if you take a bathroom scale on an elevator, you'll see that the reading on the scale increases as it goes up because that force from the ground on you has to be bigger than the force of gravity to make you accelerate upwards. So your apparent weight in this kind of situation is greater than your normal weight. These are all about the apparent weight. And when the elevator goes down for that uh, split second as it starts to drop, you have that dropping sensation in your stomach maybe, you feel a little light, you know, if you jump and time it just right, you can like jump real high. Uh, and at that moment, your, the normal force acting on you is less than your weight because it has to accelerate you down. So there's need to be a net force down. So the force due to gravity has to be bigger than the normal force. You feel lighter here because of that. Same thing if you're, you know, driving and going over a hill or on a roller coaster going up over a hill, you feel very light, maybe even weightless because you essentially are falling with the object. You're accelerating with the object. Okay, and here's the Tower of Terror situation. The cable snaps, the tower, the, the car is falling. And if you're falling with the elevator, you're both falling together, and so the ground is not pushing up on you. You're both falling together, and so you're going to float around inside of here. Of course, you're plummeting down towards the ground, but while you're falling, you're falling, and you feel weightless. So that's the idea behind weightlessness. This is what's happening in the space station. Uh, weightlessness just means no normal force. It just means you're accelerating with the thing that you're falling with. There's no such thing as zero gravity. We know gravity extends forever. It decreases with R squared, so it gets very small as you get far away. But there's always a gravitational force because there's mass everywhere. Um, you can get to very low gravity out in, say, interstellar space. But anywhere reasonably near the Earth, there's lots and lots and lots of gravity. It's just that things in orbit are falling all the time. So think about that one. Reflect on that one. It's a fun concept. But there you go. There's the idea behind what's going on up at the space station. Pretty strong gravity. Just falling all the time. All right. We'll keep on doing some more practice uh, of a couple different lug things. Until then, have fun.